Welcome to this episode on how to use GraphQL with Golang and MySQL. In this video, we'll be setting up a simple GraphQL server that fetches data from a MySQL database. Before we dive into the code, let us understand what GraphQL is. GraphQL is a revolutionary query language that's changing how developers interact with databases. Suppose in our cloud application, we have multiple services that are interacting with the database. And alongside these services, we have clients or apps that are used by the users. Now, if we use traditional APIs to fetch data for the apps or clients, whenever we change the view, we might have to change the corresponding APIs. GraphQL comes to the rescue. Imagine GraphQL as a smart translator, taking your requests and fetching the required data from various sources seamlessly. Now, let's look at the steps involved to implement a GraphQL server in Golang. We begin by defining structures that represent data. Next, we define GraphQL data types for the structures. Then comes the schema that defines the query, its arguments and implementation. At last, we set up a HTTP server. We have this simple application that displays the list of all blogs on this URL. Approximately, there are about 35 blogs on this page. We will create a GraphQL server to serve blogs displayed on this application. Let's get to the implementation now. We will install the required packages first. Install the GraphQL package. Next, we install the HTTP handler for GraphQL and MySQL driver to connect to the database. Now copy the structure of the blog model from the old app. We will modify this structure to define the blog struct for GraphQL server. Let's add ID in the struct which was defined by GORM in the other project. We need to specify the key name when data is converted to JSON. With this, we completed our first step. Uh, declare the DB connection object. Now let's make a connection to the DB in this function, init DB. To make a connection, we use sql.open method. Specify the driver and the connection string. This returns a DB object and an error. Now let's collect them in the DB object and in error variable. Now handle the error if any. We have not declared this variable. Now complete the error handling. Now let's define the main function. Here in the beginning, we call the initDB method to create a database connection. Let us move to the second step, creating GraphQL types. Here we define a function that returns the GraphQL object for our blog data. Let's name this function createBlogType. This function returns GraphQL new object. Here in the object, we specify the configuration with object config method. Set the name as blog. Now, we need to define the fields. ID is our first field. We define it this way. Its type is integer. Next field is title, which is a string. Similarly, specify content field. 
Now we move to the third step, defining GraphQL schema. We begin this step by creating the GraphQL query type. Let's create a method, query type. It defines the query type for the GraphQL server. This function accepts a pointer to GraphQL object and returns a pointer to GraphQL object as well. This method defines the structure and behavior of the queries that the server can handle. It returns a new object that is a specification of the queries that can be made. Let's put the configuration of the query in place. We will name it Query. Next, we specify the fields. In GraphQL, each query type has fields that represent the different kinds of queries that can be made. Let's say the name of the field is blogs. The type of the fields can be taken from the blog type argument. Next is the resolve function, where the actual data fetching logic is implemented. It uses the arguments passed in the query to determine how to fetch data from your data source. We haven't defined any parameters to the query, which we do so later in the video while enhancing the functionality of the query. This function returns the data fetched, which is an interface, and an error. Let's declare a variable to store the blogs. Now run the query to fetch data. This query returns the rows and an error. If there is an error, return from here with no data and the error. Now we make sure that the rows are closed after we are done. Next we loop over the rows. Use the scan method to get data in the variable B. If there has been an error, let's return from here. Collect the blogs in the blogs variable. Now, return the collected blogs. Let's go to the main function now. Create a new variable of blog type. We will use the create blog type method to do so. It is time to specify the schema of the GraphQL server. Let's create a new schema. In the schema config, we set the query as the query type we created. We pass the blog type we defined. We need to handle the error, if any. Now we will set up the HTTP server. We will be using the GraphQL handler package for this purpose. Let's see how to use this package. A root is defined like this. The handler of the root is specified like this. In our code, we will implement the handler the same way. Let's define a new root, slash GraphQL. We will name the handler as Handler. Before this definition, we need to create a new handler. In the handler config, we set the schema.
and let's set pretty to true. This formats the JSON output well. There was an error here. We have used the wrong method, it should be handle. Now let's start the server with the listen and serve method. We will run it on port 8080. Oh, here in logging we used the wrong method. Let's fix it. Let's run the program and it throws an error. Unknown driver MySQL. We have forgotten to include the driver package. We will add it here. Now run the server again. No issues this time. Let's go to Postman to test the server. Here we have created a post request to the GraphQL root. In body under GraphQL tab, we have specified the query. We use the query type blogs as we have defined this in the code. Here, we have listed the fields we would like to fetch. Now send the request. The response is exactly what was expected. We got all records with ID, title and content fields. Now suppose we do not want the content field. We can simply remove it from the query and it disappears from the response. This query fetches all records. What if we want to restrict it by adding limit and offset parameters to the query like this? Let's make changes to the code to make use of these parameters. First, we will reorganize our code a bit. The resolve function definition in the query type makes it look big. Let's move this out to a separate function. We will call this function getBlogs. This will return a list of blogs and an error. Paste the code here. Now call getBlogs in the resolve function. Next we will make a way to accept arguments in the query. For this we need to define the args key. We need to set field config argument. Let's define our first argument, limit. In the argument config, set the type as integer. Define the offset argument in a similar fashion. Now we will make use of limit and offset arguments in the resolve function. The parameter p in the resolve function contains the query arguments under the args key. We read limit like this and then convert it into an integer. Now we check the adverse values of the limit argument. If the limit is less than or equal to 0 or greater than 20, let's set it to 10. Similarly, we handle the offset argument. Next, we pass limit and offset to the getBlogs method we created some time back. Add these arguments to the method and use them in the query to the database. Let's restart the server. 
In Postman, let's run the query with limit 10 and offset 15. Send the request. In the response, we can see the first blog starts with ID 16, and the last one is 25, which makes 10 in total. Thank you for following along. With this foundation, you can further expand this server, add more complexity, and truly harness the power of GraphQL with Go and MySQL. Until next time, happy coding.